class E amplifiers could achieve efficiencies far greater than any conventional amplifier could provide. At best, a conventional amplifier such as class A could only provide efficiencies up to 50%. On the contrary, a class E amplifier could provide efficiencies up to 100%, almost twice more efficient than the class A. But in terms of practicality there are some trade-offs in performance and design challenges that must be addressed. Firstly it is important to understand the underlying concepts of the Class E amplifier. For starters a Class E amplifier is a switching mode amplifier. As opposed to the conventional classes of amplifiers, a switching mode amplifier models the FET as an on-off switch. If designed correctly, this switch would open and close with a perfect 50% duty cycle. It would be closed during the positive cycle and opened at the negative cycle. So when the switch is closed, AC current flows into the switch into the ground and this occurs during the positive cycle. When the switch is open, current flows into the load resistor building up a voltage. Ideally we could see almost square waveform of voltages and currents resulting in no overlap is seen in the power dissipation equation below, when there is no overlap there is no power loss in term of heat. For this arrangement we could say that the power amplifier should be 100% efficient. But in reality the best we could obtain from this arrangement is 81% is most of the power are lost in the intermodulation and harmonic frequencies. Not all power is being transmitted through the fundamental. So how could we improve this? To control the harmonics we can first put a resonator at the output. This resonator circuit creates a condition where the circuit short at fundamental and open at the harmonics. In comparison, a class B requires a completely different configuration where circuit is open at fundamental and short at the harmonics. So in this circuit, the action of opening and closing a switch forces a sinusoidal current. But if you think about it there is actually a problem. When the switch is closed, AC current would flow out of the resonator to the switch which is fine. But during the negative cycle, when the switch is open this resonator will try to pull back current from the switch to make a sine wave. And there is no path for this current to return because the switch is open. We can address this by placing a capacitor in parallel with the switch. During closing switch period, the current flows from resonator to ground. However, during the negative cycle, a sine wave can now be created due to discharge current from the shunt capacitor. So the sinusoidal current waveform will alternate flowing between the switch and capacitor. The main purpose of this amplifier is to reduce power dissipation in terms of heat whenever voltage or current coexist during a point in time. So we have to make sure that certain parameters are met during the opening and closing points of the switch. The point where the switch closes has the potential for a very high current draw. Thus it is best to keep both voltage and current to zero at the point. When the switch opens, we just have to ensure only voltage is zero as current could not flow during open circuit conditions. In time domain analysis, we assume the switch would be closed at zero degrees and open at 180 degrees. However, this might not be the case in most practical situations. Let's take a step back and look into the fundamental equations that define currents and voltages in this circuit. So the current is nothing more than a sinusoid with a DC offset due to IDC. To fulfill the criteria of having both current and voltage equal to zero during closing, we may require some phase shifting. This is achieved using a series inductor. Thus the power requirements can be met during the closing of the switch. The voltage across the switch is just the voltage across the capacitor which is the integral of the AC current when the switch is open. The switch forces a steady state voltage to zero when it's closed and current to zero when it is open. If designed correctly, this power amplifier circuit has the potential to be 100% efficient.